Hey, what's up? I'm Ara, aka IE Zebra, and welcome back to the channel. As a disclaimer, this video is being published before part two, Death Valley airs, just to beat y'all to the punch in the comments. So, part one of season 10 of AHS double feature, Red Tide Just Wrapped. Let's just say, um... I have some thoughts, uh, and that's putting it politely, which you can get all the tea on in me and my bestie gray areas part one finale live after show, which will be linked in the description down below. We're also live after each episode alternating channels. So episode one of part two will be on her channel this week. So after that bit of shameless self promo, because let's be honest, we have a ton of fun on the live stream, so you should join us. Anyways, if you have caught up, you will know I really want to know what the hell is up with the damn chemist still. So she's just going to let all these pale creatures run amok in LA and drive off into the sunset with baby Eli? No, not on my watch. Not happening. Anyways, Angelica Ross is confirmed to appear in part two, and I think there's more to the chemist story to be revealed. Not only that, but how a character from a previous season may also provide some clues as to where this may be heading. So buckle up and put on your speculation helmets and let's get to it. So let's just do a quick catch up on the chemist. All we know of her is that she was contracted by the U.S. military to perform experiments on how to eventually block the creative part of the brain to create more docile soldiers. However, in her words, before you can block the creative aspect of the brain, you first need to learn how to unlock it. Hence the black pill, aka the muse. So how does the black pill work? The occipital lobe. Talented people? have denser, more numerous clusters of neurons in that area. So I've been developing a drug to target that area. Made the neurons in that part of the brain fire at 10, 50, 1,000 times faster and more frequently than they usually do. The side effects we see for those that are creative, you essentially unlock unlimited creative potential, and for those that aren't so fortunate, they're doomed to become these pale, animalistic humans. I go more in depth on the effects on my Vampires vs. the Muses video, which you can find in the corner, in that little card thing, or in the description below. We still do not know the chemist's real name, even though I have some thoughts, but again, nothing is confirmed. However, I do believe her claims of at least previously working with the US military to conduct these experiments. Because, to be honest, it is not that far-fetched. And I'm pretty sure we have seen this in AHS before with a previous doctor that was also conducting some unethical experiments in Massachusetts. And if the title and thumbnail did not give it away by now, you know I'm talking about Dr. Arthur Arden from AHS Asylum. We are first introduced to Dr. Arden in season two of AHS Asylum. Fun fact, this is my favorite season of AHS just because it is so good on so many different levels. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly suggest you do, especially to prepare for part two, Death Valley. But back to the doctor. Dr. Arden is actually a former Nazi doctor, Hans Gruber, that conducted horrific acts of mutilation, experimentation, torture, and all sorts of horrors on too many victims. Just a note that due to how many atrocities he committed, I am not going to dive into them all here. Just a few that are connected to this theory. Unfortunately, if I dive too deep into the sick character's backstory, this video would go on forever and nobody got time for that. Even though I'm con contradicting myself a bit here because this isn't really relative to what I wanna talk about, but just throwing out this little connection anyways, Dr. Arden is the one responsible for amputating Elsa from AHS season four freak show's leg. We see this in a flashback scene in that season. Coincidentally, there was just a nod to the bearded lady in the finale as the violinist competing against Alma likened her to this member of the freak show. Anywho, one of the very first experiments we see in season two at Briarcliff being carried out by Dr. Arden is on Kit Walker, who had recently been abducted by aliens and had a microchip implanted in his neck. However, before he discovers the chip, he explains to Kit what he plans to do to him.
lies the secret to understanding the darkness of the human psyche. Hmm, occipital lobe. I wonder where I heard that term used before. Stick a pin in this one, I promise we'll get back to it in a bit. After discovering the microchip, which is clearly way more advanced than any human technology at the time, Dr. Arden suspects Kit was planted as a spy to get intel on his lab in experiments with him suspecting the East Germans, the KGB, and elements within the US government which ends up turning into a specific anti-Semitic remark, but the guy was a Nazi and I'm not. So I won't repeat that shit here, so go watch that episode if you're that curious. But I do think it is funny that he only sus suspects people that would be the most obvious objectifiers to his work within the US government, but not the government as a whole. More on that in a bit. One of the other big encounters I want to talk about with Arden and his experiments is his interaction with the aliens. After he seemingly is correct about his hypothesis on the aliens wanting to experiment on Kit as some part of a eugenics experiment, as they appear when he either impregnates someone like Alma and Grace, or when his life is in imminent danger, like we see when Arden tries to kill him to get the aliens to intervene to prove him right, which they do. The other time we see them intervene with Kit is when he is dying of cancer and he's abducted and never seen again. However, I want to talk specifically about the scene with him and Pepper. We see the aliens have taken some form of possession over Pepper as they communicate directly through her to insult the doctor and kind of check him a bit too. Pepper, if you're familiar with Asylum and Freak Show, isn't particularly verbal at least to the degree she was when under control by the aliens. She also is able to channel some of their powers or they are at least projecting powers through her, which I believe we will learn more about how they do this in part two, Death Valley. As we see in the trailer from part two, Death Valley, this half of double feature will center heavily on aliens. From the clips, most notably, we see something, someone being possessed, if you will, by the aliens communicating with the president, Dwight Ike Eisenhower, similarly to the aforementioned scene with Pepper and Dr. Arden. However, this time the person is floating in the air, which is obviously not something normal, normal humans can do. We also see a clip of a pregnant person being experimented on, which reminds me of the experiments done to Alma and Grace furthering the connections to Asylum. Another little item of note is the mysterious alien autopsy going down. So we got pregnancies, alien possession, alien autopsy, military government conspiracies to look forward to. So how does this all connect with what we have seen in AHS already? Well, let me tell you. I believe that the chemist and Dr. Arden are all a part of the same long-term government conspiracy that will we will that we will see formed in this part of the season. I believe the US military after World War II started to develop a program on how best to control soldiers after their contact with aliens in part two, Death Valley. And throughout its shady history, the chemist and Dr. Arden are a part of its legacy. We already know the chemist's involvement with the military as she explicitly says to herself, mul sell herself multiple times in part one. But you are probably asking yourself, why would the US military contract a former Nazi doctor like Hans Gruper, AKA Dr. Arden? Well, did you know in actual real life history, the US pardoned and sponsored around 1600 former Nazi scientists, engineers, and technicians in a little operation known as Pro Operation Paperclip. Let's get into a brief history lesson here. Operation Paperclip was a secret United States intelligence program in which German scientists, engineers, and technicians were taken from former Nazi Germany to the U.S. for government employment after the end of World War II, between 1945 and 1959. Conducted by the Joint Intelligence Objectives Agency, it was largely carried out by special agents of the U.S. Army's Counterintelligence Corps. Many of these personnel were former members and some were former leaders of the Nazi party. Of the 1600, the United States Air Force sponsored the largest number of paperclip scientists, importing 260 men between 1945 and 1952. Even cooler history fact, want to know what project the US Air Force started in 1952? Project Blue Book. 
Project Blue Book was the codename of the science systematic study of UFOs and responded to reported alien encounters by the United States Air Force from March 1952 until it ended in December 17th of 1969. Project Blue Book had two goals, namely to determine if UFOs were a threat to national security and to scientifically analyze UFO-related data. Well, after that little history lesson, let's get back to the theory at hand. Obviously, AHS takes place in a fictional universe, but the writers do draw on inspiration from real-world characters and events, which is what I think we are going to see in Part 2, Death Valley. I think Dr. Arden was one of the doctors pardoned in Project Paperclip with the task of carrying out human experimentation on behavior in efforts to assert control over military personnel. We see this with the way he describes how he's going to experiment on Kit, like the creatures we see surrounding the woods around Briarcliff Manor. They survived the initial experimentation, but unfortunately had their humanity stripped away from them. Sounds a little bit familiar. We do not know exactly who in Asylum hired Dr. Arden as a Monsignor, hints that the people that place Arden at Briarcliff are way above his station. He experiments on people that do not really have families to look for them and is using test subjects in Briarcliff, which seems like something they could let him do to conduct his research. Obviously, this would be more of a hush-hush situation that only classified personnel would be privy to. However, unlike the chemist, the doctor was missing the magic ingredient, alien DNA. At the time Dr. Arden would have been conducting conducting his experiments, it would be fairly recent after they made first contact based on when this may take place as Eisenhower was president from 1953 to 1961 and Asylum takes place in the 1960s. I could see him being allowed to experiment on soldiers but not trusted enough with alien samples. Being the man of science he is, he quite possibly could have left journals detailing some of his experiments and research which the military could have confiscated after his disappearance. Years later, this research can be used by other scientists working on projects like Project Blue Book and whatever mystery alien cover-ups they had going on. I mean, let's be honest, the Pentagon recently confirmed the existence of UFOs, or as apparently they're calling them now, Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon, or UAP. So I think the chemist was allowed to use some of this alien DNA within the pill, seeing as by this point, it wasn't as much of a cover up like the existence of aliens and most likely didn't need as high of clearance compared to when Dr. Arden was around. To go deeper into the tinfoil rabbit hole, I brought this up several times, but I thought it was very odd that they cast Neil McDonough to play the president in this series, since the last show I watched him in took place relatively around the same time period, and that was as General James Harding in Project Blue Book. If you haven't seen Project Blue Book, it was a show on History Channel starring Aidan Gillen from Game of Thrones and The Wire as Dr. Alan Hynek and Michael Malarkey from Vampire Diaries as Captain Michael Quinn. It only has two seasons, so it's definitely worth the watch. But not to get too spoilery, wouldn't you know there is an episode of season one of Project Blue Book called Project Paperclip. To briefly sum up what happens in this episode, Project Paperclip, a bizarre UFO encounter with a commercial airliner, leads Dr. Heineck and Quinn to a top secret program involving ex-Nazi scientists in Huntsville, Alabama, known as Operation Paperclip. To make a long story short, Heineck and Quinn break into the base, they sneak around and find an alien body floating in a suspended animation container. After Quinn and Heineck have left, General Harding, Quinn's boss, shows up to join Von Braun, one of the former Nazi scientists in charge of this particular Project Paperclip base on the tarmac, where a large saucer-shaped object is then wheeled out of a hangar and a pilot in a flight suit is put into the craft. This pilot is complaining he doesn't want to do this, but he seems a little bit drugged and unable to struggle. The craft looks like a human knockoff version of a flying saucer, and then it suddenly disappears. So we have the same actor, alien bodies, human experimentation, former Nazi doctors, unethical human experiments, which seem a little too connected for me, 
or maybe I'm just wildly speculating here. Maybe Ryan and Brad are also fans of Project Blue Book, or it's all a coincidence. Well, what do you think? Could the chemist and Dr. Arden all be part of some larger military conspiracy within the AHS universe? Will some of the outstanding questions from part one get resolved in part two? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Do not forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for future uploads. Just a reminder, you can catch me in my bestie gray area live after every episode episode on either of our channels. I will link the playlist that has the previous episodes below. See you next time. Bye.